I have a guest that in his wildest imagination, he never thought he would be sitting opposite a Jewish man and loving him. Why? He was born in a city that you're very familiar with, Bethlehem, as Micah says, Bethlehem of Judea. And he was raised to hate the Jew. He was raised to be a terrorist bomber. He actually released a bomb. I believe it was, it was in Bethlehem. You wanted, you wanted to kill Jewish people. Uh, you, and the thing that I find very, very interesting is you came to the United States and, and you were with an organization that was a forerunner of groups that we hear in the news all the time, uh, a forerunner of Hamas, Al-Qaeda, uh, the Muslim Brotherhood. I mean, we hear this in the news all the time. A lot of the Middle East countries, uh, their, their new freedom is allowing them to vote and many are getting into office from the Muslim Brotherhood. Um, what were you taught by this organization in America? Why were you part of it? Well, you said it, I wanted to kill Jews. Uh, in America, we were planning for jihad in America, uh, for destruction, mayhem, and all kinds of things. What part of kill Americans don't get? The Council of American Islamic Relations that says we are a peaceful entity was born from the IAP, Islamic Association of Palestine branch Hamas in the U.S. Hamas was active in the U.S. My mentor, Jamal Saeed, he was a colleague of Abdullah Azzam. Most Americans don't understand. I say those names like Abdullah Azzam. Abdullah Azzam was the godfather of Al-Qaeda. Most Americans don't know that the real godfather of Al-Qaeda was not a Saudi. He was a Palestinian from Jenin. Hmm. Well, let me ask you about this Muslim Brotherhood because they seem to be winning a lot in the elections in these uh, new democracies in the Middle East. Uh, they appear, I mean, they're accepted uh, uh, on our, in the United States, on our television, in, in the White House. Uh, uh, are they kind of peace-loving as opposed to radical? <laughs> Absolutely radical. There is no such thing as peace-loving Muslim Brotherhood. Muslim Brotherhood is the umbrella organization that gave birth to all the Islamic terrorists. I know, but they appear to be peace-loving. Well, they play the flowchart. You know, there's a sim very simple flowchart. Do an uprising, the people uprise, the governments begin to clap down on the uprising, uh, then the media goes there and begins to film from CNN, BBC, and all these things. Then they be begin to call for democracy. And then, of course, you know, what better word to use for the West? We want democracy. Uh, and the West is happy to think, well, wait a minute, maybe what we are having here is Islamic democracy. So Islamic democracy or is, is like saying capitalistic communism. It doesn't exist. So the West is basically uh, uh, fooled by the words of democracy. 75% uh, of the Egyptian government now is in the parliament is Muslim fundamentalist. And then, of course, after they take over the government, out with democracy. In the Middle East, yeah, sure, they'll use democracy. It's uh, one man, one vote, once. And that's it. Okay, the description from uh, the Muslim holy books of the, their Messiah is a mirror image of the Christian description of the Antichrist. Why do you say that? Absolutely. Everything about uh, the Islamic Messiah. Islam is not void for Messianism, by the way. They have what is called the Mahdi. The Mahdi, by the way, is a Messiah to both Sunni and Shia. All Muslims must believe in this coming Messiah. And everything in the Bible that talks about what is called the Antichrist is there in Islam about the Islamic Messiah. He bring, if, if Daniel talked about the Antichrist making a seven-year covenant, Islam taught about the Mahdi creating seven years of peace. If it talks about uh, uh, some of the martyrs that were beheaded or Israel being invaded by the Antichrist, Islam taught how the Mahdi will even unify Turkey and Iran to advance against Israel. Let's see, Gog and Magog rings a bell here. Uh, if, 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 if it talks about the Trinity in the Bible, uh, Islam says that the Mahdi will come and denounce the Trinity, that they will come and they will destroy the cross. They will break the cross. From everything in Daniel, Revelation, you can think of the rider of the white horse in the book of Revelation. By the way, Muslims take pride about what's in Revelation regarding the rider of the white horse. That's the Mahdi. That's Imam Mahdi to the Shia. That's the Mahdi of the Sunnis as well. 
So in every aspect in the Bible, when you read Antichrist or the man of sin, and you look at the definition of the man of sin, it is in Islam. Listen, you were able to think outside of the box to become a believer in Jesus. Wait till you hear as he thinks outside of the box, confined only to the words of the living God and looking through the lens of the East as opposed to the lens of the West, some conclusions he comes up with, you will be literally shocked. Don't go away. We'll be right back. I'm shocked by the conspiracy of silence by the news media concerning the dangerous results about the recent election in Egypt. On June 24th, by the narrowest of margins, only 51 percent, a member of the Muslim Brotherhood, Mohamed Morsi, became president-elect of Egypt. One of his main spokesmen shared before thousands the ultimate goal of Morsi's election. Quote, our capital shall not be Cairo, Mecca, or Medina. It shall be Jerusalem. Our cry will be millions of martyrs march towards Jerusalem. Yes, Jerusalem is our goal. We shall pray in Jerusalem or else we will die as martyrs on its threshold." End quote. On top of this shocking declaration, Iran has announced future joint military exercises in the Mediterranean with Russia and China. What a dangerous alliance. These are such dangerous times for Israel and for the world. We must understand that the events we are now reading in our newspapers and watching on television newscasts are predicted in the prophecies of the Bible. We'll be back with Waleed Shui Bot in just a moment. I am amazed at the revelation uh, that God has given my guest, Waleed Shui Bot. I'm absolutely overwhelmed. I have to ask you this question. Most Christians in the West have read the Left Behind series, uh, uh, Hal Lindsey books, uh, Dallas Theological Seminary, and they have A, B, C. This is what's going to happen in the end times. When you talk before a group of people that have that whole scenario inside, and that's the way it's going to happen, it's like a photograph, how do you change their mindset? Yeah, means. I go to bookstores galore. I go to the airport all the time, and I see all the books, you know, fiction, 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 as long as the eye can see. Then you have history and some, you know, but, but it's fiction. I mean, even Helen, everybody knows Hal Lindsey would know Tim Lahey would know this is fiction. It's Christian fiction. The Christian fiction becomes a, uh, the issue. It's very easy for me to convert the Christian fiction prophecy uh, paradigm into biblical prophecy in real biblical prophecy. And that is, once we look at the literal references in the Bible, just the little references, let's put Daniel aside, let's put Revelation aside, since it's filled with allegory. I, I, we, if you could ask a couple of questions to these people, what would you ask them? Well, question number one, which no one in the world can answer, really. Question number one, out of all the literal references in the Bible, okay, not the allegoric, every literal country mentioned in the Bible that God deals with, in the end times, what are they? No one can tell me they're not Muslim. Every single one of them is Muslim. I know people can argue over Gog, Magog being Russian. But, but, but wait a second. Where did we get this whole European Union thing? Well, in the 70s, you know. The you, 70s? Yeah. Hal Lindsey became, you know, and, and Tim LaHaye, you know, these guys made it popular. So uh, Greece joined as a 10th nation in the European Confederacy. Ah, we got the 10 horns. We got the 10 toads. So then another nation joined, 11, 12, all the way to 20, 20. Some nations joined the European Union. So you got the uh, Daniel chapter 2 with the statue of Daniel, uh, Nebuchadnezzar's dream, uh, 10 toes. You have a 23, 24 toes, you know. All of them are protruding out of the west. One foot's got 20-some toes, the western leg, and the eastern leg's chopped off. So uh, I go to churches, and I speak to pastors, and I speak to the congregation, and I challenge the pastors, you know. Uh, I say, okay. Uh, you believe in a revival of a Roman Empire. We're fighting over semantics, really, because when I say the Islamic world, they say, oh, no, it's a revival of a Roman Empire. It can't be the Muslim world. I say, okay, we're fighting over semantics. If the Roman Empire, did it include North Africa? No one can deny it. Yes. What countries included North Africa? 
Libya, Algeria, Tunisia, Morocco, Mauritania. Uh, what happened in Libya lately? I've been saying this 15 years. I've been talking about this Arab Spring 15 years ago from the Bible. What happens in Egypt? Will that be part of the Roman Empire? Uh, well, I have to include them. Of course, they're part of the Roman Empire. What about Turkey? Is that, was that part of the Roman Empire? Well, that's the Eastern leg. Of course, I have to include it. Uh, OK, so what's left? Europe. Well, we can argue over Europe, but there isn't a single reference in the Bible where God punishes a European nation. Show me where. Rome is mentioned 16 times. Some blessing, in fact, to the believers in Rome. But there is no destruction of Rome in the Bible, literally by name. We're going to say Mystery Babylon. That's a whole different question. But there is no little references. Out of all the nations, Messiah fights. Every nation, Messiah fights in the Bible. Every single one of them is Muslim. This is no so, so, so oh, okay. So let, let's take a look at a little different paradigm. Uh, what do you believe the mark of the beast 666 is? Well, we have to understand from the book of Revelation in chapter 13, the mark is the number of his name. We have to think mm -hmm. of the name of the beast. People in the West think name of the beast. What would it be? Uh, in the foreheads of the followers of the Antichrist, it might say something like Hillary Rodden Clinton or uh, some name. No, 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 <laughs> don't say that. <laughs> no, it's not a literal name. It has nothing to do with a literal Western name. You know, look at the Messiah. We interpret the Bible from the Bible. The Messiah's name, what is his name? His name shall be called Emmanuel, which is what? God with us. Right. That's, his name is not Emmanuel. He's not Mexican. He is from Bethlehem. His name should be called Emmanuel, which is God with us. This God with us is what? A title. It's our what? A creed. Our creed is what? God with us. Only one faith in the world has God with us. In the same essence, the name of the beast. What is it? The creed of the beast. They have a creed. The kingdom of the Antichrist has a creed. It's a blasphemous creed. What it is, is it? The major creed of Islam is what? I declare there is no God but Allah, and Muhammad is his messenger. America, you want peace with Islam? You all must recite, uh, there is no God but Allah, and Muhammad is his messenger. Will you be willing to recite this, Said, Of course not. Why? Number one, you're an American. No one tells you what to do. Number two, who is Allah? You know, that is not the God of the so Bible. So you believe that the mark of the beast is the creed? The creed. If you look at the movie, The Kingdom of Heaven, let's say, go watch the movie. The kingdom of heaven. Watch Saladin. Saladin was that figure, the Muslim guy who was fighting mm -hmm. against the Crusades. Right. Look at him sitting in the tent. What does he have around his arm? He has around his arm, Bismillah, in the name of Allah. Yeah, but he talks about the forehead, too. And the forehead as well. The bandana yes. around the Palestinians? Absolutely. Not just Palestinians. Turks, uh, uh, Muslims in Africa. Know, but what's the mark on the bandana? It says there is no God but Allah and Muhammad is his messenger. It says in the name of Allah sometimes, Bismillah. If you look at that movie I mentioned, on the right arm is Bismillah. And, and what does 666 mean? Well, if you look at the Greek, there's three Greek, Greek letters. No one can deny they're Greek. But they also, for some miraculous reason, supernatural reason that I cannot fathom, it also reads in the Arabic language. In fact, none of my detractors denied that it does say Bismillah in the Greek letters. It Which means? In the name of Allah. So 666, the mark of the beast, yes. is on the forehead or the arm, the name of Allah. In the Greek, it reads it that way. Wait, wait till you find out what he has to say the Bible shows us in reference to Allah and the crescent moon. Don't go away. We'll be right back. Hello, Sid Roth here. And I'm with Walid Shuibat. And he told me things that I've never heard before, such as, tell me the correlation uh, between uh, Allah and the crescent moon. When most Westerners read Isaiah 14, where it talks about Lucifer, they look at the English translation, Lucifer. You know, I go to the Hebrew. 
the Hebrew says Hilal bin Sahar. How art fallen from heaven, O Hilal bin Sahar? Hilal is the word for brightness, and it's also the Aramaic, Hebraic, Arabic word for crescent moon. So we read it in context. How art thou fallen from heaven, O crescent moon, son of the morning star? So there's the crescent, there's the star, there's a symbol of Islam itself, as in the name of Lucifer. And let's not forget in Isaiah 14, it continues to say when he's captured, this Lucifer, this Hilal bin Sahar, he's judged. People will look at him and say, is this the man that made the earth tremble? They say this is the rebelliousness of Lucifer in heaven. When did Lucifer become a man? Anti the anti-Messiah, the anti-Christ, no question. Okay, what about Allah? What are the various names for Allah? Uh, what is he called in the Quran? He's called many names, some are beautiful. Tell me, tell me a few of the names that we're interested in right now. The interesting names of Allah is Khayrul Makirin. Khayrul Makirin in the Arabic. In the English it means the greatest of all deceivers. So, really? absolutely. In fact, there are prayers in Islam of having Allah uh, give you the gift of cunningness. Hmm. So uh, some of the names of Allah in the, Qur in the Quran is also uh, Al-Mutakabbir, the most proud one. So this is what I'm trying to say. So, so who's going to be the Antichrist? You mean his name? His name or where will he Everyone be Everyone who tried to figure out his name was wrong. <laughs> uh, for sure. <laughs> so you know, I, think, I think I know where, which country he comes from. Which he country? Com he comes from the country of Turkey, no question. Well, that, that, that begs the question. We are taught that the Antichrist is going to rule the world. You say different. No, he can't rule the world because if you look at several places in the Bible, he fights against other nations. In Daniel 11, Daniel 11 gives us the best description of the Antichrist. He declares war on the what? The strongest of all fortresses. Well, the strongest fortresses or the strongest military might in the world is not the Antichrist, it's someone else. In fact, most Westerners hardly, if ever, study how the Antichrist falls. When you ask a typical Western Christian, how is Antichrist uh, destroyed in the end? Well, Jesus breathes on him and that's it. Right. Well, there's more to it than that. That's the command, by the way, of battle that the Messiah orders. But the destruction of the anti Antichrist is in Ezekiel 28. Uh, he's, number one there, the Prince of Lebanon, the Prince of Tyre. His destruction in verses 8, 9, you know, you can continue on. It says that God will raise nations, and those nations are the most terrible of the nations militarily, and they will destroy him and they will throw him into the pit. In Micah 5, God raises seven shepherds and eight principled men to fight against who, him. Who, who are these seven shepherds and, and eight principled men? Well, no one knows them yet, but they are definitely mentioned in the Bible. Let's not forget, even the Antichrist has basically seven uh, uh, horns. I mean, ten, mm -hmm. three plucked out of the root, what remains, seven. So you have seven good leaders versus seven evil ones. Seven will stand with God. Seven will be against God. So in this essence, Micah chapter 5 is, is a mystery to people today, but it is seven nations that God will raise. They will rule the most powerful nations militarily in the world. Uh, and let me uh, maybe uh, suggest, how about America? While many people think America is doomed. Yeah, is America going to survive? I think, I believe so. It is such an unedifying message when I hear America is doomed, America is finished. We've been through a depression before. We've been through all kinds of things before. All right, just briefly, because I, I want to know the answers to these. Uh, is oil mentioned in the Bible? Absolutely. How can anyone deny Isaiah chapter 34 in which, in which God destroys Edom? Let's not forget. Ezekiel, what, what is Edom? Ezekiel 25. Edom is what? What country? Arabia. Okay. Absolutely, and, uh, because Ezekiel 25 tells us Edom is from Timan to Dedan. These are biblical cities that are in Arabia. Uh, and then in uh, Isaiah 34, it says about this place in Arabia, it becomes uh, what? A burning pitch. It will burn forever and ever. I mean, Arabia will burn literally. It will be destroyed. Even the Bible tells us what nation destroys Arabia. What nation? Iran. Iran, huh. yes. Yeah, that, that's uh, sorry, kind of I, making sense now. Yeah. yeah, in Isaiah 21. Isaiah 21, uh, you look at the reference. Babylon is fallen, is fallen. That should ring a bell. That's the same reference in Revelation 14, Revelation 18, regarding mystery Babylon. Who destroys it? Arise, O Elam. And, you know, uh, What's going to happen to Iran? Iran will eventually be destroyed. What's going to happen to Egypt? 
Egypt, the Messiah is going to come down and fight for the believers in Egypt. There will be persecution of the believers in Egypt. Christians here in America. They already have persecution. No, I am talking. In Egypt. No, I am talking about major persecution. I am talking about persecution like you had what happened with the Jewish people in Auschwitz. Uh, I'm talking about major massacres in Egypt. I'm talking about crucifixion, amputations. In fact, how many Americans are aware one of the bills that are trying to pass in Egypt, in the parliament, is what is called Hiraba? Look it up. Uh, look up my name and look up what I talk about it. The idea of uh, passing laws on crucifixion and amputating of the right hand and the left foot. You know what the most important thing is? I believe that you're going to hear revelation about end times that you have never, ever even thought about. It's never even been addressed. But what is more important than what the order of events will be is where are you going and whether you have intimacy with God right now. And the way you have intimacy with God is if someone was to die for your sins. Jesus already did it. Believe the blood of Jesus washes away your sins and with your mouth say, Jesus, you are my Lord.